everyone, welcome to episode two of the Honest Self YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. It means the world to me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tuscany. I started a blog called The Honest Self, but now I'm turning this into a YouTube so I can share more of my story. So today we're going to talk about loss. We're going to talk about how grief can affect somebody and how to overcome grief how to deal with grief, how to recognize when someone is grieving and how to support them, and how to come out on the other side of it and use your grief for something good and, and heal. And I can't wait to talk to you guys about this because this has been a pivotal, or this was a pivotal moment in my life because this is where everything changed. I had a really great childhood but after this happened, this is kind of when things got hard and when a lot of struggle, depression, anxiety, panic started to happen. So basically my grandparents helped raise me. I lived with them until I was 14. We lived in Redondo Beach, like right across the street from the beach. So it was just, I had an amazing childhood. They would drive me to school. They would drive me to after school activities. I was really, really close to them. My grandma used to dress me up in cute little outfits and my grandpa used to sing to me in the morning to get up for school and you know take me to my piano lessons. So I was really, really close to them. When I was 14, I was a freshman in high school and my grandpa had Parkinson's disease. I remember he started falling a lot, falling and hurting his hip. He was in and out of the hospital. And then in October, I got a call from my mom and dad saying that he passed away. And at the time, I had no idea what that meant. Like, what, like, I couldn't really process it. I think when you hear about someone dying, you don't really understand what's going on in the moment. And you're kind of in shock. And so I remember just racing to the hospital, going there, and I was able to see him. He was passed away, but I was able to hold his hand and be there with him. And it was a really surreal experience. And my grandma was in the hospital at the same time. She was on the floor above that. So I went upstairs to her room. And I remember crawling in bed with her and her just holding me and saying, honey, your grandpa loved you so much. I love you so much. You kept grandpa alive longer. My grandpa was an alcoholic most of his life. And when he heard about me or met me when I was born, he stopped drinking. So my grandma basically said that I kept him alive longer because he stopped drinking when I was born. So that always, like I always remember that conversation of her just reassuring me of their love for me. And it was almost like she knew it was about to be her time as well. So it's really crazy to look back on that experience. A week later, my grandma had a stroke. She was in the hospital for two months. She had a tube in her throat because she couldn't really breathe well. She wasn't talking. And it was Christmas morning. My dad came in, my mom, I think too. My sister and I were sleeping in, our, in my bunk beds and they said, grandma passed away. Christmas, which is crazy because Christmas was my grandma's favorite holiday. So it's really, really beautiful actually that she did pass away on Christmas. At the time, it, it was really upsetting just because it was her favorite holiday and we used to like go all out and set like decorate everything. So it almost was kind of a Grinch for a little bit after that. Like I don't want to celebrate Christmas because it reminded me of her. But now I look back and it just always makes me think of her and it's a good warm feeling. So I think that's how it was meant to be. But yeah, I went and saw her too when she was already passed away. I remember holding her hand. I saw her turquoise rings and just, I don't know. I just, I remember having that last moments with her and watching my dad cry. It was a very emotional day. So after that, my dad and mom could not afford the house that we lived in, Redonda Beach. So my dad decided to just sell it and let's, we're going to pick up and move to North Carolina. He looked up and found North Carolina was a great place to live. So why don't we pick up and leave and move there? Well, I was a teen. I was still trying to figure out who I was as a person. I had a lot of friends there. My life was there. My home base was there. Everything was there. 
So to me, I'm thinking, why would we just get up and leave? I already lost my grandparents and now I'm gonna have to lose my friends and my childhood. I felt like a lot was being ripped away from me. So we did move, he bought a house and I stayed in California for the summer, but then I went out to North Carolina freshman year or sophomore year and I started school there for a month I was with my mom and dad and I remember being so depressed, so angry. I remember crying every day, telling them that I'm gonna kill myself if they don't send me back to California. So I had a lot of suicidal thoughts during that time, especially since I just lost my grandparents and I was grieving, but I didn't understand how to grieve or understand what death meant really. And so many changes, and especially changes in my body, hormones, everything as a woman or as a teen. So I really had a lot of other things going on and that, and it was a lot for me to really understand at the time. Well, my parents sent me back. My sister said that I can live with her in Orange County. But she always had to work, so she was gone most of the time. And since I missed a lot of school, I was really behind in my credits and I had to go to a continuation school. For those of you who don't know, it's basically a school for people who have been in trouble or who <laughs> like are troublemakers. And I did not, I felt like I did not fit in. I was wearing Amber Crombie and there was always, oh my God, it was such a sketchy experience. I would go for three hours a day and I would take the bus in Anaheim and go to school and come back. So I think it was really hard because none of us actually talked about what happened. Instead, my dad just seemed like he picked up and moved away and wanted to forget everything or just not deal with it. And so since he didn't deal with it or talk to me about it, it wasn't an open conversation. I felt like I couldn't deal with it. And my dad was dealing with his own grief because those were his parents. He was really close to them. And so I think it was really hard for him to lose them. And that my parents moved in with my grandparents and were living with us too. And so he also lo lost his sense of financial security and home base as well. So I think he didn't know how to process that. Because later that year, I found out my dad almost died of a heart attack and had quadruple bypass surgery. So it seemed like he had his way of dealing with it. And then I was a sophomore in high school, not dealing with it, basically partying, drinking, doing drugs, being in an abusive relationship, basically anything, anything to ignore what was happening because I was grieving and I was hurting and I didn't understand that hurt. I didn't have resources. I didn't have someone to talk to. I didn't have other kids who could relate. I lost all my friends for a moment there that I grew up with because I was now outside of Redondo and I didn't have all of them to be there for me or to talk to. You know, I moved away even though I was in Orange County. And so it was really, really difficult. And then from there, I think I was always so scared of losing someone because I think when you lose someone at a young age, you always are kind of on alert and you have that guard up of, am I gonna lose someone or someone gonna die in my life? You're always scared because you've had that trauma of having that security and then everything ripped out from under you and just everything changing. So that was really, really, really difficult, but it has shaped me into who I am today. I will say, that I did not cope with it in the best way. But at 14, 15, how are you gonna cope with it? So some solutions and some ways I wanna talk about, about grieving, it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel your emotions. It's okay to not wanna talk about it. You go in your room, shut the door, and you don't wanna talk to anyone. Well, I hope whoever's on the other side of the door realizes that's you being depressed and upset, and they actually try to reach out to you and try to make an effort and try to be there for you because you of course shut the world out because you're upset and you don't want to face reality. You know, I missed a lot of school because I was upset because I didn't want to face other people. I, I didn't have the attention span or the energy to even like be in class, but to my parents, they thought, oh, well, she just doesn't like going to school, so she's not going to go to school, so that's it. No, it was like I was grieving. I was upset. That's why I wasn't going to school. So there's, there's more layers underneath of why we're doing things other than just, oh, well, they just don't like it. Well, I wonder why. Why don't they like it? What is going on in their life? So as a parent or as a person dealing with someone with grief, ask more questions. Be there for them. Be a support system. 
get them in a support group. If they're a teen, find other teens that are grieving as well and get them in a great support group where they can acknowledge and talk about their feelings. Or as an adult, if you're dealing with loss, I encourage you to find a therapist to talk to and also a support group. For me, journaling helped a lot to get my thoughts out, especially if I didn't want to share those with others. Instead of holding them all in and holding those heavy that heavy weight on me, journaling is such a good resource. Another thing is yoga and meditation because you can kind of be one with your thoughts and really, you know, work through a lot of things. You know, I think teens are really told to be strong and just focus on school, focus on sports, focus on that. There's so many pressure to act a certain way. And I think already having that pressure on top of losing someone is a lot for someone to handle, you know, and it's, I think it just, it, it can become teens or anyone needs someone caring in their life to care for them and be there for them and discuss willing or able to discuss or articulate their feelings, but at least let them know that you're there for them. If you're an adult and your kid's going through this, show your feelings. Emotions are okay. Let them know that emotions are okay. You know, after everything happened, I dealt with constant panic attacks, anxiety, depression, trauma. But all those mental illnesses is only because I had unresolved issues and unresolved grief that I never dealt with. And that's where all of those things come from. They're just unresolved issues that we've been through. And until we heal and actually acknowledge them and make peace with them, I think it's important to understand the importance of loss you know, when I was a kid, I didn't realize how important it was or how much it was going to affect me to lose my grandparents. But now that I'm older, wow, I miss them so much. I wish I could tell them stories and talk to them and tell them about my life today. And when you're younger, you know, I had some guilt. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I spent more time with them. I wish I sat there and remembered some of their stories and but you don't have guilt no matter when you lost somebody you can't help guilt because we never know when someone is going to pass and we just have to realize that everything happened the way it did and kind of make our amends with it and you know know that it everything happens for a reason as hard as it is in that moment i think at that time i had no idea why it happened i'm like why would this happen to me I kept thinking why would this happen to me and now i look back i'm like oh my god this happened for me i think if i didn't lose them then I wouldn't be where I am today because I had such a great childhood and they really gave, you know, gave me so much, but then I lost everything. So not only did I experience stability, but then I also experienced chaos and great loss and having to be in flight or flight syndrome all the time. You know, I lost having to do like, no, like, am I going to have a home? I don't have finances to support myself. Where am I going to live? How am I going to for food sometimes. I was living off Hot Pockets and Top Ramen my sophomore year. You know, it, learn more about grief, learn more about loss, but know that it's okay to feel how you're feeling, but also know that it's gonna pass by. I can say 15 years later, I can sit here and talk about losing my grandparents. Of course, I get emotional because I miss them, and every time I talk about story, it brings up old stuff, but it's all for a reason and it's made me stronger I don't think I would be as resilient as I am if that didn't happen. And so I'm really thankful. And I feel like they're always looking down on me and always watching down. You know, and I, I think it has, everything has came full circle. It's kind of funny, you know, going back to my parents always thought I didn't want to go to school. But now I'm in college, going to graduate and going to go on to my master's. So it's kind of funny because I actually continued school. So see, now when a healthy being actually works through their trauma and goes to therapy and figures himself out, has more self-awareness, has acceptance, starts loving themselves, goes for what they want to do. Like, look, now I'm flourishing. Now I'm going to school and going to make something of myself. So what I'm saying is you don't always have to stay broken. You may be broken right now, but know that it's gonna pass by and you're gonna get through this. And just know that all these experiences are gonna shape you into a strong person. And they're gonna you're gonna be able to tell stories, which is such a beautiful thing. Not everyone has all these stories to tell. So use it as a good thing. 
I really hope this YouTube video can help someone who is grieving or has dealt with grief because you are not alone and I know how difficult it is. We're always going to miss that person. We're always going to earn for that person. I mean, there's times on Christmas where I've cried in the morning being like, man, I wish my grandparents were here. I don't, you know, I want them to be here. I want them, you know, and, and that's okay. And sometimes I look through photos and I'm like, man, I miss that. You know, I miss, I miss how everything was together. You know, I had this childhood that was so together and then it wasn't because when my grandparents died, my parents split up, they moved. I was on my own in California. It was like my whole life changed. So it's okay to not only grieve losing someone, but grieve, grieve losing like your life kind of, you know, I had to kind of recreate this life and kind of build on what I had, which I didn't, I felt like I didn't have a lot to kind of have to rebuild on that. So there's a lot of layers to it and it takes some time. So just have patience with yourself. I can't wait to talk to you guys more about more mental health topics, more mental illness. You know, this was my pivotal moment. This is my story of what has changed my life and why my life went the way it did, what caused me anxiety, depression, you know, trauma. But I can sit here and say that though that does not define me and that I am so thankful for my journey and I'm thankful that I kept fighting and never gave up and kept going. So keep going. Have patience and know you'll get through it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Subscribe. Go follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever you want. I'll put all the little names below on my thing. Thank you guys. I love you all so much. Um, that was a really vulnerable story. So thanks for listening. Bye.